the sun is shining and my thoughts are turning to maybe a little urban sketching or some plein air painting getting out of the studio but realistically if I have to carry all this lot with me I'm not going to do it because frankly I'm not a donkey and um, you know the more you take with you the less likely you're to do it so my thoughts turned to making a really tiny but comprehensive travel set and look this is the prototype I've come up with it can just fit in my pocket how cute is that so if you stick around I'll show you what's in here what I did what I learned and I'll do differently next time and maybe some alternatives as well my name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share tips, tricks and techniques that I wish I'd known ages ago. And this week it'll all be about making your own travel set. Of course you can just get little pocket sets commercially. This is one from Derwent that I was very lucky to be sent a prototype of. They've, they've now launched it on the market. And you know, it's, it's great. But the problem when you buy a set is that they put in colours that you just will not use and you do not like. You know, I do not want white in my watercolour set. There are colours that I use all the time that might be missing. Um, this one didn't have any uh, French ultramarine or burnt sienna in, so I've just sort of stuck extra pans in. Or there's colours that you really like and you start to use those up while you've hardly touched others. So, you know, they're great, but not necessarily perfect. So making your own seems like a really good option. And this is the one I've come up with. So let me just show you what's in here. I've got swatches of the colours. I've got a little bit of paper towel. And actually, I've got swatches of the colours on the bottom, but I'll, I'll show you that later. I've got the paints. These are double palettes of um, French ultramarine and burnt sienna because I use those a lot. I've got a little water brush that I put a stopper in so it can fit inside. A little bit of magic eraser because inevitably I'm going to make mistakes. A little bit of sponge and a clip because those are always handy. And then I've got a mixing well here. I started off by thinking what sort of tins I could lay my hands on that might sort of fit in, in my pocket. Um, this is probably taking the definition of pocket a little far. It's just a, a, a metal pencil case. I definitely wanted something metal for robustness. Um, this is one I've just started to make and it's an Altoids tin, which, you know, they're really sweet. Oh, excuse the pun, but lovely. I've also got some sweet tins from Apsi ages ago, French one there, so that would be great. And then I even thought, mm, I wonder if an old glasses case might work. It's pretty jolly robust, got a good snap on it, so that might work and that would fit in your pocket. And I put a call out on my local Facebook group and asked if anyone got some tins and I got these really pretty ones and um, these little flat ones, which actually are for holding sanitary towels. Well, there you go. Far better to have watercolour in those. So I've got lots of options. The easiest and the most obvious would be to use a tin like this. And if you've already got watercolour pans that are uh, you know, something, say, in a, a set like this that you wouldn't want to take out and about because look how battered the bot box is already. You know, you can literally do that. Probably fix them into place either with a bit of blue tack or um, you can stick little magnets on the back or even just glue them in place and, and you'd have a very quick set but that felt a little bit like cheating. So let's move those out of the way. <laughs> Usually, these are little half pans. This is what we'd fill with watercolour. And you can get these for, I think, 
five or six pounds will get you 50 of them they're little half pans but we're trying to be creative here and think of alternatives so if you haven't got any of those I did see some people suggesting on that you could use a Lego brick oh I can't even get this off there good old Lego now obviously Lego bricks have got this sort of double in the middle that you'd need to remove so I had a go at that and I hope you can see I've removed quite a lot of it I just use nail clippers but that's as far as I could get so if you're going to use Lego bricks I actually think you're going to have to drill out the middle you need to keep them secure and that's why I've just got a flat piece of Lego so you could put them on there hold that and drill out the centers to make little squares and then I suddenly thought you could just glue it into your tin and then you can remove your pans and you know swap them around fill them up whatever so I think Lego bricks have got a lot going for them as long as you've got a drill and you don't drill through your hand but then I had another idea. So I found in our bathroom cabinet some rather out of date throat sweets. So I reckon what you could do is throw the sweet away. Well, you could eat it, I don't mind. Um, and then use the blister pack to put your watercolours in. That would work really well this silver foil is really hard to remove and I know that would drive me nuts so I would actually have to either remove it all or paint it so it looked pretty and if you've got a decent size tin easily fits in there and you get a lot of painting into those alternatively do you remember I thought that the glasses case might be quite a good receptacle I've taken out the lining and that, with a little encouragement, would fix in there really well. Before you fill them, just make sure they're not squished. So like that one has been squished down, just pop it down so that you've got maximum capacity for, for your watercolours. But this weekend I was teaching workshops and I love teaching workshops because I learn as much as the students and one of the students had a palette made with this and it's a mini ice cube tray and I was like why did that never occur to me I mean well why would you want mini ice cubes don't they melt really quickly but it's brilliant so this cost £2.99 from eBay it's got 160 little squares it's made out of silicon I chose a white one for fairly obvious reasons and you can just cut it with scissors so that's what I did here and I've cut out there how many have I got 25 little squares but you can cut it to whatever shape or size you want I've started doing one here and I wanted to just show you, because I've done this wrong, that um, what the issue is. As you cut it to shape, you need to be really careful that you don't nip the side. So I'm going to cut off the one that I had inadvertently nipped. And I've found that it's a bit trial and error to work out you know, what, what will fit perfectly into your tin especially if they're odd shaped if it's square it's a lot easier and then that can fit in your tin if you have a color that's a real favorite so for me it's burnt sienna french ultramarine you'll want more than one of these little squares so what you can do is just snip down the divider and sort of turn it inside out as such it's really flexible and then just trim off that little divider 
and then you've got a double section and I'm going to do that on two because as I say French ultramarine burnt sienna I use a lot and I might because I do love phenacrinone gold and use a lot of it so I might do another double one for that there and then that can fit there what I learnt from my prototype is that I should stick my um, magnet on the back of this before I fill it. I have put magnets on the back of here and they have stuck beautifully to there. These are meant to be self-sticky magnets but I can't squish them on really hard at the moment because this is full of sort of damp paint. I'll be able to sort that out at the end. It's not a problem, but I reckon if I, I stick magnets on now, it will be a lot better. Luckily, I had this sheet of self-adhesive magnet from leftover from another project, just to prove it's magnetic. There you go, Look, magnetic. You can get magnetic tape. You can get tiny little stick-on magnets. Um, I have got this, so guess what? This is what I'm going to use. You just cut it with scissors. It's sort of rubberized, I guess. Then you peel off the back and you can stick it on. This is what I can't do with this, is give it a really good squidge because obviously it's full of paint. So doing that first is a better idea. The sponge if you cut it to size will actually help keep it in in place anyway so yeah that won't fall out and now you have to decide what colors you want to put in your palette so I've got three doubles which I've said are going to be French ultramarine burnt sienna and queen gold and that leaves me 15 choices so I reckon a couple of yellows, a couple of blues, a couple of reds, a few treats, and we'll be good to go. I think this is my selection. We'll just look. I would always recommend a, a warm and a cool primary. So we've got the yellows there. We've got the warm and the cool reds there and, and the blues here. I've got my three favorites that are going in the doubles. And it's worth just thinking, what are you going to sketch? You know, what are you s hoping to paint? And obviously making a palette that suits you. So filling it up is super easy. All you do is squeeze the tube into the area where you want it to go. I wouldn't overfill it but I would try and get it as level as possible. Now, depending on the brand you use, some are going to be runnier than others, and some will take longer to dry than others. Don't use this immediately because they need to dry up a bit. Particularly, say, something like Sennelier, if you're going to use them, and the only one I've got out here is, is that beautiful fallow turquoise they never really fully dry because they've got honey in them so just think that one through whether that's going to be a problem they get firm enough so i think that's okay now this is quinn sienna from daniel smith's oh it's a gorgeous color if possible just tap it to settle it depending how liquid they are that might help this is Quinn Gold, and that's going to go in there too. Okay. And then we do the little individual ones. So I'm going to start with this lemon yellow. So we filled that. I had great difficulty with my cobalt turquoise because it separated out in the tube. Um, 
so hopefully that's okay i've given it a couple of sharp taps to try and level everything and if not then I'll just smooth out with a bit of a palette knife so that needs to to dry and if it's going in this tin i would really like um to know what colors i've put there so on my prototype i did try two different ways i swatched all the colors out and wrote them on a piece of watercolour paper and then laminated it because if it gets mucky uh, just to demonstrate like that you can just wipe it off so that's why I laminated it if you haven't got a laminator you could use some sticky tape just to to protect it I guess or maybe even you know sticky back plastic if you've got that then it occurred to me that actually I could just swatch it on the back here so that would be one less thing to carry so what I've used is watercolour ground and then swatched it out it also occurred to me that it would be far easier to use the lid as a mixing tray sorry something stuck there if it was white rather than silver so actually I've put watercolour ground in here as well um, and then a layer of white acrylic on top if you've got some metal paint uh, you know paint suitable for metal you could use that couldn't you so let's do that now right we'll prepare the tins thing I found worked quite neatly was to tape off the area that you want for the swatches um, this is actually uh, electrician's tape you could of course use masking tape you could just do it freehand whatever you want so if you don't want a loose one and you haven't got any watercolor ground of course you could swatch this on paper and then just stick it to the back of the tin you know that wouldn't be a problem either so there are, there are three alternatives for your little color chart but i think it's worth having some sort of color chart just to remind you of what's what what you've put in there um, and also if say you thought about making one of these as a gift for a friend a little color chart like that would be lovely so i've got some watercolor ground and it's going to take two or three coats to um, really cover up say the pink of this if by any chance you find a tin that's already white you are a very lucky person especially for the inside because it's going to be so bother i just thought something i've done that totally wrong well there you go you're going to learn from my mistakes let me take that off so i've missed a crucial bit which i didn't on the first you need to abrade the very shiny surface to help the watercolour ground stick and inside the tin so basically that just gives gives it something for the watercolour ground to stick on onto i thought it wasn't sticking very well when i painted it and i totally forgot that oh that's better so i'm still going to need i would have thought three coats and i'm going to paint inside here just to help something some stronger paint stick i don't reckon on its own without any finishing that this would stand up to um, as a mixing because it's slightly absorbent and it would all get stained so i'm going to put some acrylic on top of this once this layer has dried so if you would like to have separate wells for mixing your colours rather than just one big one an idea is to use a hot melt gun to build a little barrier to stop the mixing of the colours just like this don't do it right to the edge because it'll stop your box um, opening uh, well sorry shutting if it's right to the edge so you could let's do 
like that. This will solidify and it's just enough to provide a little barrier and now I've got three little mixing areas. Three layers of the watercolour ground have dried there and as you can see I've written all the colours. I started to run out of space sadly but there you go. So it's just a case of very gently swatching out my colours. So I'm starting with Mars Black there and we'll just carry on swatching them out and then I'll give it a quick coat of clear varnish. If you haven't got any spray varnish, clear varnish, just use some, oh if you've got nail varnish, something like that. Anything just to protect it. You could even use a little bit of Dorland's wax if you wanted to. Um, just to seal and protect that because don't forget this is the bottom of the tin. All right, just drop some water there. And um, we don't want this to wear off. So everything's dry and it's time to construct. We've got our swatches there. We've got our paint with the little um, magnet on the back. Here's our sponge. If we put it maybe over there a bit more, I can put in a bit of magic eraser for all those mistakes I'm definitely going to make. I'm just going to try and put those over safely that side simply because the paints are still a bit wet. But actually before I do that let me show you why the clips are so good. This tin lid is separate but a little clip just gives me my mixing palette and keeps everything together so that's really cool. So we want that clip in as I, say, I just want to be careful of those because the paint's still wet and if the paint wasn't wet I'd just pop a little bit of kitchen towel on the top, lid on. So there are two very lovely little travel sets and I hope those get you out and about painting and sketching without feeling like a donkey.